When it comes down to Kingdom Hearts, one of the biggest things that I would classify as probably the best part of the series are, of course, the bosses in the games. With so many bosses variety from the main enemies of the Heartless themselves, to the human-like characters, to the Disney characters, all of these bosses are just absolutely amazing, and I absolutely love encountering them. I've often thought to myself, I wish that they had a boss rush mode in each game to where you can just play through and fight them all, but naturally, we haven't gotten anything close to that, sadly. But, hey, a guy can dream, right? But, for this video's purpose, I wanted to go ahead and label in my top 10 absolute favorite bosses in the Kingdom Hearts series. There's so many bosses, and this is not an easy list. If you feel like you can probably make one better, by all means, go right ahead. But for the time being right now, I want to go ahead and label my top 10 favorite bosses in the Kingdom Hearts series. There's only one exceptional rule, and that is no inclusion of final bosses. The reason for this is because they're meant to be grandiose. They're meant to be over-exaggerate fights. So, of course, naturally, these final bosses would make sense. But with that being said, if you had to ask me a question which one is my favorite final boss in the Kingdom Hearts series, it's obviously going to be Kingdom Hearts 3's final boss with Master Saiyanord. Personally, I felt like this was probably the best that I've ever seen in terms of a final boss ex 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 uh, execution. The reason for that is obviously due to the fact of all the phases that you have to fight him in, and how the final battle was actually commenced. And needless to say, it worked out really nicely in my personal opinion. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and include all the different bosses. Now, I will also mention that there's one other exceptional rule, but we'll get to that once we get there. But for the time being right now, you'll just have to watch the video and see which ones are my favorites. Number 10, all of the Iron Prisoner forms. The reason why this is on number 10 is obviously due to the fact that I'm including four additional bosses instead of just one. But here's the thing, they're all technically the same in terms of how they fight and how you have to go about fighting it. If you had to ask yourself, okay, how do you describe this fight? It is basically fighting an imprisoned berserker, which each phase basically making it more and more extreme as it could be, with the final form being even more so crazy. The first one is obviously more or less just a prisoner. He doesn't really do much except for like uh, pounding onto the ground with lasers and a cage that will occasionally come up at you. The second phase version, obviously the same except he has a hammer which means he does a little bit more variety. The third one, he does a lot more movement momentum and in the fourth version, he throws a bunch of objects right at you from the stadium. Needless to say, making it a little bit more frantic than it needs to be. But ultimately, I actually kind of like this boss, not only because of his unique design, followed by the different evolution phases that it has, but also too just because of how practically insane this fight can get. It's basically an introduction to how crazy Burst by Sleep bosses will be at a later point in the game. And trust me, whenever you play Burst by Sleep, that the secret bosses in this game are absolutely batshit crazy. But the Iron Prisoner, I absolutely love the design, and I love how you have to fight it. Needless to say, it is, it's one of my personal favorites overall. How do you encounter it? Well, he's basically an optional boss that you can fight within the Mirage Arena in Burst by Sleep. Number 9, Astro Warrior. I felt it was necessary to include at least one Gummy Ship boss, as there's not really that many Gummy Ship bosses that can be encountered within the games. There are some that can be encountered in Kingdom Hearts 2, and then in 3, they actually made a few more additions, but none of them actually stick out as well as the Astro Warrior did. Personally, I felt like both his first version, followed by the harder version, is actually pretty cool to fight, especially considering the fact that there's not many different gummy ship bosses that are available within the game series themselves. But just overall, he's a pretty cool design, and I felt like there was a little bit of inspiration from Einhander that came about as well, in a form of Kingdom Hearts S style. I mean, this is coming from the same people who did Einhander, so I guess that makes sense. But overall, I just, I love the design mostly. Combat-wise, it's pretty obvious if you've played the gummy ship missions and stuff like that, but overall, it's pretty fun in my personal opinion. Number 8, Oogie Boogie. Didn't think you were going to see a Disney character boss, did ya? 
Well, out of all the Disney characters that I enjoy fighting, Oogie Boogie would be one of them. And which one? Because obviously there are two versions, aside from the Chain of Memories, but we don't really count that. But if I had to pick which one, I like the Kingdom Hearts 1 version better as to oppose the Kingdom Hearts 2 version. The reason why I like the Kingdom Hearts 1 version is that there's actually a little bit more control as to like how Kingdom Hearts 2 was. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a little bit frantic in terms of how you have to fight him, but Kingdom Hearts 1 is a little bit more controlled, I felt. I mean, yeah, you have to hit the dice in order to prevent a high roll, which could possibly screw you over, and you do have to hit the switch, but if you're able to monitor Oogie pretty well, this is actually pretty swift this is actually a pretty smooth fight that can be fought. That and Ugi actually has a second phase compared to Kingdom Hearts 2 version of the fight. Yes, admittedly, there's not much that can be said about the second phase, but if I had to say if Tim Burton could design a boss, this is probably what we would be seeing. It's just a giant, morphified Oogie Boogie that's just fused together with his manner. Needless to say, it is pretty freaky as it can get. But overall, I just like the first phase of Oogie Boogie personally myself. It's just... You get to fight him in his lair, you get to fight him with all of his gimmicks and stuff. It's just, if you're a fan of Nightmare Before Christmas, chances are you're going to feel nostalgic while fighting Oogie in this fight. It's really well put together, I thought. Number 7. Lump of Horror. Another Unverse fight. This is actually surprising, huh? Well, Unverses actually have a pretty keen design point, much like how the Heartless have been. But Lump of Horror is actually a really cool fight. Considering the fact that, you know, you're just fighting a giant sludge monster, but really there's more to it. Aside from him storming into you, he has storm attacks which essentially could shock you, preventing you from being able to finish a combo or whatever. Then he has a mid phase where he splats himself into multiple parts where you have to take them out in order to get him back to his normal phase. Needless to say, this boss is very reminiscent to the Iron Prisoner, mostly because of the fact that this guy just, he will trample you if you are not careful. Especially since I've beaten him whenever I was playing through critical mode. And oh boy, you talk about tough. He, 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 he does not hold back. He will trample over you. But overall the design is just creepy and it definitely matches up to the Monsters Incorporated theme. Especially with the theming of scaring. You know, I mean, hell, if you were to look at this and you were to try to symbolize fear, well, this works out quite nicely, actually, I thought. Number 6, Grim Reaper from the Kingdom Hearts 2 game. More specifically, the Final Mix version. Now, as I'm sure most of you are aware of, in both the original and Final Mix, aside from additional add-ins and stuff like that, the Heartless are actually reskinned colors as to oppose their original look. And while the original look looks alright for what he is, the Final Mix version actually makes him look a little bit more darker tone, actually. And in all honesty, it works well in the environment that it's given. This fight is very frantic and very... <laughs> it's one of the very few boss minigames that I don't mind. Especially considering the fact that, you know, the only way you have to fight the Grim Reaper is by collecting the medallions, return them to the chest, and then you can finally do damage to him. As annoying as it may seem for some people, I found this fight actually enjoyable, and really, it's really fun just to fight this one. It's a really cool design, I felt. Number 5, Luxord from Kingdom Hearts 3. Out of all the organization bosses, there's a lot of them that I really enjoy fighting, but there's very few where I would actually say the phrase, I absolutely love this boss. Luxord is what you would call the king of minigame bosses. And the reason why I say that is that obviously within Kingdom Hearts 2 fight, you do actually have to play a couple of card games with Luxord in order to defeat him. The same way can be said for Kingdom Hearts 3's case, but it is way more over the top and way more outrageous than it needs to be. Especially if you're playing through the remind portions of the data bosses of Luxord. This alone is nuts. It's crazy, and I absolutely love it. All the gimmicks that you have to do in order to find him, all the things that you have to do in order to beat him, it's just an overall crazy experience, and it's just a fun battle just to fight him again. Number 4, Shadowstalker and Darkthorn. This is a two-faced boss, so naturally you would have to include both of them. 
Shadow Stalker, you start off and you fight him. He infuses himself into the chandelier in order to fight you occasionally, but for the most part, all you gotta do is just beat up the orb itself, and once you beat him, you'll get into his second form, which is that of the Dark Thorn. Kind of an inspiration to Beauty and the Beast, obviously, being that of the Beast design. He is probably one of the more frantic bosses that you would have to fight next to a handful of other bosses that are within Kingdom Hearts 2. But I just love the look of this. I love how you have to fight him. I just... He's so... Interesting, I felt like. You know, it's very irony of how, you know, the Beast himself is imprisoned in his castle. And he's imprisoned by his curse that he has created. And really, the combination of Shadow Stalker and Dark Thorn really does well to cement as a boss within Beast's castle. And I felt it worked really nicely in terms of the theming of it. Number 3. Grim Guardianess. So in Kingdom Hearts 3, up until this point, you pretty much fought some relatively okay-ish bosses. And some of them aren't too bad and some of them are okay, but this one was like the first real boss that I got to fight in Kingdom Hearts 3. There are many other bosses that I could have easily included, but I could not exclude Grim Guardianess because of how it is. In the Kingdom of the, uh, Tangled World, as we will have to say for now. This particular boss is actually one of the more interesting ones, both in terms of how it is actually created, and also how you actually have to fight it. Essentially, it's created after... We never really get to see how a Heartless is created most of the time. We're used to seeing Heartless just being summoned out of nowhere, and very rarely would we ever get to see a Heartless actually be created. There's actually been a handful of times where we can actually say the phrase, technically we did, but we never actually got to see the explanation as to how it technically works. In this case, we actually saw just her robe being fallen into the ground, and as Marluxia summoned darkness, it just magically created a Heartless. Which I thought was fascinating, because this basically cemented an ideology that has been throughout within the Kingdom Hearts series. With that being said though, the boss itself is insane. You have to fight it, follow it around in order to knock it down, and occasionally it will climb up the tower where you actually have to make your way just to beat it. It really uses everything to its advantage, and it created this magnificent epic battle that really cemented itself into the franchise. Honestly, next to the Lump of Horror, Grim Guardians was actually one of the most impressive boss fights that I got to fight within Kingdom Hearts 3. But there's two more right after this, so let's see who beat it. Number 2, Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. Technically, you don't actually fight Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2, but in Final Mix, you actually do get to encounter him in the main game, and that includes the data version as well. Roxas is literally a pinnacle of in terms of bosses for Kingdom Hearts 2. It literally is this epic climactic feel of just finally facing off your nobody and just finally reuniting with him. The theming itself is also great as well, Other Promise, it's just this awesome, magnificent feel, the way you have to fight him, and if you're able to do everything right, you can actually wield Roxas's dual wield Keyblades and use them against him. Quite frankly, this is probably the best that we're going to see out of Kingdom Hearts 2. I mean, not to say that everything else is bad, but quite frankly, there's not many organization members would ever actually say the phrase, I would fight him a hundred times and never get bored of him. Nor would I get pissed off, which, if you play it on Critical, chances are, you will very easily. But overall, I love Roxas, and needless to say, the battle itself never disappoints me. Number 1. Kirk Zezer. Not a lot of secret bosses in Mythfully, but when it comes down to it, I have one particular boss that I always look forward to fighting, and I absolutely love Kirk Caesar. There's a level of detail that goes on into this fight. In some way, it can be somewhat simplistic, and in other ways, it can be overwhelming at times, depending on how you are with the game. This boss has a number of phases. For starters, he actually seals you from ever using magic until you defeat those orbs. Once you do, then you can use magic again. But of course, after you've hit his head a couple of times, he'll then form himself into a magic shield to where you actually have to hit him with magic in order to defeat that form. He'll refer back to where you can fight his head again, and then he'll refer back to where he'll seal his magic while gradually getting more and more intense as the fight continues on. 
But not only that, this is actually one of the very few bosses where we were heard that there was actually a particular contest in which where a name was actually being used in order to put into a boss. Kirk Caesar was that particular boss where the contest winner had their name submitted into the boss. But I have to ask, what type of name is Kirk Caesar? Seriously, I mean, how, how did you come up with that name? Or is that a is that an actual real name? I, I'm actually kind of surprised but needless to say I thought that was an interesting detail to know but overall this fight is so cool it really shows how to create a cool boss in terms of the Kingdom Hearts layering of bosses but overall it's just a unique design it's absolutely enjoyable and even though again it's not a difficult boss it can still be somewhat simplistic yet at the same time it can be overwhelming regardless of any factors and the fact that it's a secret boss I highly recommend people to actually try to fight it just because of how fun he is in my personal opinion. He's my absolute favorite boss and I just cannot say any more aside from the fact that he's my absolute favorite obviously. Well guys thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Till then this is Black Cross signing off. Catch you guys later.